Senate Bill 2358 criminalizes the the assistance a voter can get on returning their absentee mail-in ballot. And federal law guarantees that voters with disabilities are able to select the assister of their choice. Federal law only excludes two groups, and that's employers and union representatives. Everyone else, uh, the voter gets to choose anyone except them. So when we saw SB 2358 limit who a voter can select, we uh, we wanted to uh, make sure to stand up for voters with, with disabilities. And um, in, our, in our suit, we have individuals who also wanted to be, take part because, you know, the way that they vote absentee by mail was going to be impacted by this law. And the assisters as well would face criminal punishment. Senate Bill 2358 put someone who um, who assists up to one year in county jail and a $3,000 fine. So when, when we saw that and we saw how soon the upcoming elections were coming, we wanted to make sure every voter in Mississippi was able to vote, including those who rely on absentee mail-in ballots. In the law, that exception for, for caregivers uh, is uh, exceptionally vague. So uh, can you talk a bit about that and the, the practical effect that would have for um, folks, whether they're you know disabled or elderly in a nursing home, for being able to get their ballot counted? So first of all, none of the terms are defined, which um, you know one of the things we discussed at the hearing was, what does family member mean? Um, is that just your immediate family? Is, is that a cousin? Is that a cousin of a cousin, right? So, and, and caregiver as well. When we, one of our plaintiffs, Disability Rights Mississippi, explains that for people who live in congregate facilities, they often have to rely on uh, not only one staff member, but multiple staff members. It's a receiving line for them to actually send mail. So, you know, most people think, okay, the actual person providing uh, care to to the person the facility that's someone who who can return their ballot you know that would be included but what about the person at the front desk what about an intern what about someone uh you know someone else and there's multiple people within this list and the big thing is that section 208 guarantees the voter's choice and the reason why voters have such a wide-ranging choice is because if you go back to the purpose of Section 208, Congress said that the only way to guarantee that voters with disabilities are able to effectuate their right is that they have to be able to select the person of their choice to assist them, uh, and the assistance is from registration to having that ballot counted. So, um, you know, part of the discussion at the hearing was, well, you know, caregiver has a certain definition, and the issue is that any line drawing goes against the voter's choice. The voter might not want to have the nurse, for example, who directly provides them care to be the person to return their ballot. Maybe they have a, a relationship with the front desk, an intern, someone else, you know, maybe uh, the janitorial staff, whoever it is, it's the voter's choice. So even though care, one of the issues was caregiver wasn't defined, but the bigger issue is it's the voter's choice. And um, to kind of talk about the family member, Uh, issue to both because of the lack of definitions, there's a chilling effect. Some of the assisters that we were uh, representing were explained to us that the fear of prosecution is so great that they don't want to have to go through a whole trial to kind of explain, oh, it turns out I was a caregiver, right? No one wants to get arrested at first and then have their, uh, you know, have to go through all that. And how the supremacy clause of our constitution works is that state laws cannot conflict with federal laws, and that includes conflicting with the purpose. So the chilling effect was, was something that we were also worried about as well. Can you tell me, uh, you know, about the how the hearing went and then, you know, moving forward, what it, what it looks like now that y'all filed for a preliminary injunction? The hearing went well. Um, you know, we, we feel confident in our position, and, and we believe that we believe we, we laid the groundwork to show why Senate Bill 2358 uh, frustrates federal law, but we also showed how our individual plaintiffs will be impacted if they're not able to get the assister of their choice. One of our plaintiffs, Mr. Whitley, is a uh, is an Army veteran who lost both of his legs due to his service, and he relies on you know on uh, an assister of his choice to return his ballot. So we kind of we were able to share their story and make sure that the judge understood what would happen if this law is allowed to go into effect and um, impact the, uh, the, the August primaries. And, um, you know, now we're waiting for a judge's decision. Um, we, we filed our case under an urgent motion because uh, the law goes into effect July 1st. 
and absentee voting begins at the end of July. So we were um, definitely, you know, hoping to get an opinion before the law goes into effect, but we, we think that it could be coming anytime. Yeah, that's did Judge Wingate give any sort of time frame? Not not really. He said he uh he's gonna he's gonna review it, but nothing nothing concrete.